Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to the webinar. I'm, I'm Bob Sheehan from Surefire Social. Uh, along with my team of marketing experts, I build successful marketing campaigns for our clients. Many of you work every day with members of my team on building internet marketing programs that have a positive impact on your businesses. Just a few words about Surefire Social for those of you who may be new to us and learned about us through this webinar. Surefire Social was started by our founder and CEO, Chris Morentis, with the goal of helping small businesses navigate the digital world. Chris wrote a book called Surefire Social, and in this book he called for advocating a wide digital marketing footprint with many elements done in concert in order to grow your online program for your business. You can't just stop at your website is how we like to talk about this. Your web presence is more than just your website. Thus, you have to engage with customers across the web and be social with them in order to maximize the results. House is a very special network for the home improvement industry. Uh, we've helped many of Surefire Social's clients have a nice presence on House, along with other critical places on the web. We're seeing people get great results with House by building a program there. Today, we'd like to welcome Lindsay Thedeen, our host. Uh, Lindsay's part of the industry marketing team at House. She's a public relations and brand specialist with experience across the agency, startup, and consulting landscape. Before House, Lindsay ran strategic marketing for a major tech company, led publicity experts for major motion picture studios, and founded a successful marketing consultant, consulting company. Thanks for joining us, Lindsay. Before I turn it over to you, just, just a few quick housekeeping notes for our listeners. Uh, you're all currently on mute. If you have a burning question, please type that into the chat box, and we'll try to take them as we go along. We'll review them all at the end. I'll leave that up to Lindsay. So take it away, Lindsay, and um, have a good webinar. Hello, and thank you to the Surefire Social team for having me and for coordinating this. Um, I am here to make sure you guys all become house experts and have a very successful experience using house. As it was mentioned, I want to keep this interactive, so definitely submit your questions as we're going. I will stop a couple times to see how we're doing, if there's anything specific, and then there will definitely be time at the end for all of you guys to get your questions answered. So back in 2010, the couple that you see in front of you was in the San Francisco Bay Area and was starting a complete home renovation. And they started really excited about this process. They had finally reached the point that they got to build this dream home. And so they jumped into it very excited and very quickly realized it wasn't as much fun as they thought it was going to be. There wasn't a great resource to find professionals in their area to really show them what they needed. Um, so they were just sort of asking parents at their kids' schools for names and hiring them and really hoping for the best. So they got through that obstacle and thought, okay, we're on track now. And then it was the process of working with these professionals and trying to explain what their vision was. I'm sure many of you have dealt with it on the other side of things, that a client feels like they're explaining things very clearly, and you come back with plans, and it's not at all what they thought they had described so clearly. Obviously, just pointing at a picture is much easier so they were spending their weekends at Barnes & Noble, going through magazines, trying to find photos that they could agree on, and then lugging those around to meetings, and they thought there has to be something better. And that is how House was started, with the goal of how do we make sure that homeowners and professionals um, find each other, and once they do find each other, how do we make that process of working together a little bit easier? Now, we have grown a little bit since those early days when they started the company. They are still our president and CEO. They're in the office with us every day, making sure that we stay focused on those goals. But we now have over 35 million unique monthly users. We have over a million professionals in over 65 categories. So whatever specific business segment you're in, there is a spot for you on house. And our app has over 350,000 five-star reviews. So really, we are everywhere. There is a lot going on on house. Um, we really like to think of it as five layers on the outside, five areas that in the past were very separate. So first, there was this idea of looking at photos. And so you were going through magazines, 
but there wasn't a lot of information when you found the photo. Then, how do you find the products that maybe you see in some of those beautiful photos? Participating in the community, um, maybe going to your neighbors and having to ask them questions. But the projects that they had worked on might be very different from the one that you were trying to do. There wasn't a great area to really participate in the community. Also, to get expertise. We see now that homeowners really want to be educated about this process and know the questions that they need to be asking. But there weren't really any great resources. So we take all of those pieces at House and really pull them together. And we like to think of us, we're kind of in the middle. We're the technology piece, and we're connecting all of those five things. So in this case, when you're looking at a photo, it's not just a photo, but you can actually see products that are available for purchase. If you're looking over on the right-hand side, you can see the name of the professional that uploaded this photo. You can see questions that have been asked about this photo. And you can see discussions that are happening around this to really see what's happening in the community. So we bring all of those pieces together. Where I want to focus here, for you professionals, how you guys are really going to be successful, we're going to go over a couple different areas. But the first one is that first step of going in and creating a professional profile. This synergy design and construction profile you see in front of you is a professional profile that they've gone in and created. And we think is a very great profile. Kind of shows the really important pieces here. In the middle, we like to think of this as your mini website. And don't worry, I'm going to show you guys how you can go in and change this. But this highlighted here in the middle is the mini website. It's where you have the opportunity to talk about your business about the services that you provide, maybe awards that you've won. This is a great place to go in and maybe answer those frequent questions that you get and actually make that part of your business description so it's not something that people have to come in and ask. So that you guys are no longer just competing on price, but you're competing on the story of your businesses and the services that you guys provide. Right here on your profile are also reviews. We know that this is really important. There's so much information available at our fingertips. And homeowners cite reviews as the number one thing that they want to look at when they're deciding if they're going to work with you on a project. So you can see right up at the top, underneath the company name, in this case of Synergy Design, you can see the star rating and how many reviews they have. And down on the bottom right-hand side that's circled, you can actually start to read the content of some of those reviews and go in and see what these people have said. We also have this contact information up on the top right-hand side. We never want to get in the way. We're more of a matchmaker, helping you guys find each other, the right professionals with the right homeowners. But when they feel like this could be a good fit and they have questions, they will be able to come straight to you visit your website, pick up the phone and call you, or at the top, if they use that contact me button, they will get a form where they can submit and that will go directly to you and will be sent to your email. When they're going through your profile, they can also look at projects. So this is where you guys are going to be uploading photos of the work that you have done. Another thing we know that is extremely important to homeowners is they, they can see if you have worked on a project that is the same style and scope as the one they want to work on. How do you show off style and scope of your past projects? By showing off photos. So all of the photos you see on House, um, now we are over 9.5 million, I believe, have all been uploaded by professionals. So not only are they going to stay right here on your profile under projects, but they're also added into that 9.5 million photo stream. So homeowners will go on, look for inspiration, fall in love with those beautiful photos, and then come and look at your profile. We also have idea books. So there are two types of profiles on house, a homeowner, and then for professionals looks a little bit different simply because obviously homeowners don't need to go in and talk about their business. But everyone on house has idea books. That's just where people are going in and saving photos that they like. 
this I will talk about a little later is actually a really great tool you guys can use when you're working with a client. And then questions. We also know it's extremely important for homeowners to get a sense of what your personality is like. They want to know what it would be like to work with you and get a sense of your expertise. So when you take the time to answer a question on how, it's not just going to be lost in the hundreds of thousands of discussions that are happening. It's going to stay with your profile. So now that potential new customer, that homeowner who's thinking about working with you, can see the question that was asked and the way that you took the time to answer the question. So that is what a really solid profile looks like. Those are the pieces that go into a profile. Sometimes it helps when you see what it's going to look like in the end. You can sort of envision that. But now I want to dive in a little bit. How exactly do you get your profile to look like that? And there are just a couple really important things that you guys need to do. Number one is making sure your profile is complete. Research says that 70% of the buying decision is made online. So before anyone ever picks up the phone or walks into your showroom to have a conversation, they want to feel like they are 70% of the way there. So the more information you include in the profile, the more comfortable someone is going to be reaching out to you. It's also important to remember on how that all text is searchable. So the more information you include in your profile, the more often you're going to show up in a search result. So to edit your profile information, where you'll start, the top right-hand side of this page, you'll see circled in green, there's a white box that says Edit Profile. When you log into your account on House, this is the page that you're going to see. And you want to click on that Edit Profile button. And where you're going to focus when you click on Edit Profile is Business Description, services provided, and areas served. These are the three areas that you really want to spend some time on. Business description. It's perfectly fine to take the description that you have on your website and paste it in here. But then I would strongly encourage you guys to change it a little bit. People are still looking for that personal connection. So why did you start your business? Or why did you join the company that you're with? What projects inspire you? This is also, and I mentioned this just briefly, where you can take a couple minutes and think about the common questions that you get. What are the questions when someone is considering working with you that they get or that they ask you about either this process or about your company? This is where you can go ahead and include that information right in the business description. So now you've already answered that question before they even had to ask it. Services provided underneath your business description. This is, one, a way to show up in all of those search results for all of the services that homeowners are looking for. But it's also your opportunity to help educate. Many, especially first-time homeowners, don't exactly know which professional does what, who they need to hire. It's not a given that an interior designer would do color consultations or space planning. Maybe only certain designers do that. So by including those in services provided, you're going to show up in search results. But you're also going to help that homeowner understand they can hire you, and you will be able to take care of all the needs that they have. Areas served. How far are you willing to travel to do these projects? Now by default, it is a 50-mile radius. We can geo-match where someone is searching for a service provider and where you are. But you also want to show up when someone is going in and typing in their specific town. So you actually want to include all of the areas that you'll travel to under Area Serve. So when you go in to edit profile, focus on business description, services provided, area serve. That's who you are, what you do, where you go. That's going to give people a very solid understanding of your business. So before I go on to step number two, which is talking about our photos, are there any questions that were relating to the profile that you guys want to ask right now? No, you're, you're good to continue, Lindsay. You're Good. All right. You guys are all experts, I'm sure. Okay. So number two, most important thing that you need to do 
is start uploading photos of your work. We see this is where people really start on house, both homeowners and professionals looking for inspiration. This is the part that gets people really excited. You don't have to be realistic about budget or about space. You can just go in and start to upload photos of work. So you guys want people to fall in love with your photo. So they come and look at your profile and hire you to do the project. So again, when you log in to your house account, you will be taken to this home page. You guys will see right up on the top right hand side, there is that edit profile box that we used last time. But this time, you want to press that big plus sign that is circled in green. It's right underneath the 25 projects. And that's where you can start the process of uploading photos. I'm going to walk you guys through this process because we ask you a lot of questions when you're trying to upload a photo to your profile. But stick with it. There is a method to this madness. We are trying to make your photos searchable. So I want to point out the important things you need to include so that your photos will be the ones people find. When you put, click on that big plus sign, you're now taken to this page. You've told us that you want to add some photos onto your profile, but now we need to understand how do you want to organize that. So you'll see the first thing at the top is select project. For most of you, you're going to be starting a new project. But once you've added a project, you can always go back in and add to it. So this is where you're going to go and decide, are you starting something new or are you adding to a project that you've already started? Then you want to give that project a name. And remember, for most people that are looking at your profile, they have no idea what they're looking at. So if you had to describe this project in three or four words to give people a general sense, maybe a dark and modern custom home, a single craftsman with modern touches, a couple words like that are great, is a, will work as a great project name. Again, those terms are also searchable. Now if you keep following me down the page a little bit, you'll see under project name it says category. And right now, the first one is spaces. That one, by default, is what we have checked off, because that's going to be the majority of your photos. A space photo is that completed interior exterior shot. But if you want, you also have the option to upload products, drawings, so drawings, floor plans, or before photos. So you just need to tell us which one of those it is so we know the right category to put it in. Once you've done that, you're going to grab the files on your computer and hit upload. And now we have more questions for you. Because on the last page we asked you about your project in general, but now we want to know more specifically about this photo. So you can see on the right hand side, um, we have these drop downs that have been added. When you go in and tell us that this is a kitchen photo, or an entryway, or whatever it is, these drop downs are going to change. These are going to cover the common elements of a room. So instead of you having to go and type in what are the islands, what's the cabinet finish, what is the countertop material, you can actually just use these drop downs to add some general information about your photo. So you can see in this case, counter material, it's granite countertop. So now, when a homeowner is on house searching, for example, a granite countertop, your photo is now going to show up. So these are really important in making your photo searchable in those 9 million photos. Once you've added those drop downs, we also have a keyword box. It's a little bit toward the bottom on this right hand side that circles in green. And you guys should see those green boxes where the keywords are. Those drop downs that I just pointed out are going to add general information. But the keywords are now where you get to be specific. Keywords are just describing words. So my advice is go from left to right and tell me everything that you see in this photo. You never know what someone is going to be searching for, and you want to catch them on all different points. So don't overthink it. Tell me everything you see. 
but also try to be as specific as possible. If you even happen to know the brand name of something in this, go ahead and include that as a keyword. That is really going to help make your photo searchable. So I can't stress enough when I say tip number two is uploading photos, it's uploading photos and adding those keywords. So step number one, go in, edit your business information, and fill that out as completely as you can. Tip number two was uploading photos and adding those keywords. You want people to be pulled into your profile. And then tip number three, having a really strong presence on house, is going in and requesting reviews. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is the number one most important thing to a homeowner. Every year we send out our house and home survey, and in it we ask, when it comes right down to it, what are the top five most important things? Number one is always reviews. So we've gone in and made getting reviews easy for you. Again, when you log into your house account, you guys see that edit profile button on the top right hand side. But what we're looking for here is right underneath your company name, in this case Synergy Design and Construction. Circled in green, it says Get Reviews. When you click on that, the form in front of you is what you're going to see. That's what's going to open up. In the top box, you'll see it says Choose. Enter the email addresses of everyone you want to request a review from, past clients, colleagues that you've worked with on projects. Underneath that, there is a message box. We have a message that is auto-populated, but I would definitely recommend you change it a little bit. Obviously, if you're re requesting from a large group, you can't make it too personal, but really just the tone that you would typically write an email. And then you hit send, that green box that you see underneath the message box. What happens when you hit send is every email address in the top box is going to get that message from you from the email address that you have on file in your house account. It's not going to come from us. It's going to look like you sent them an email directly with that message and with the link right to the review form that will then attach to your professional profile. So they're not going to have to go searching anywhere. That form is going to be right there for them. If they haven't done it in seven to 10 days, we send a little reminder on your behalf, hey, don't forget to go in and review me. So this is a really easy way for you guys to go in and get some reviews on your profile. So again, to make sure you are successful on house, fill out that business information, upload photos of your work, and take the time to request reviews. Sometimes it can feel like a lot when you log into House. There is a lot going on. But one really easy thing to follow, when you log into your account, and again, I'm going to use that edit profile as kind of a reference point here. You see it on the top right-hand side. Underneath that, it's circled. It says your profile strength. So these are the tips of things that you need to do to make your profile really strong. In our case, you can see it says, get three reviews. Collaborate on three idea books with clients. Those are actually live links. So when you guys log into your account and you see the tips that we've given under your profile strength, you can just go in and click on those, and it's going to take you exactly where you need to go to get reviews or maybe to collaborate on an idea book or to upload photos of the work that you've done. So that is a really easy reference point. I wanted to tell you guys, well, actually, let me take a moment and see if there are any questions you want me to stop for here. Yes, we actually have a, quite a few going on right now. Oh, okay, um, let's take a break <laughs> before I show you guys some new things we have. We have one from Jay here. And he wants to know how many photos should be added to a project. Jay, that one is a little bit tough to answer. 
um, it really depends on the scope of the project. You want to make sure that when you look at the project or when that potential homeowner, they get a really good understanding. So maybe if you did some work on um, one, you know, the entryway, and you were just helping do some updates, you can probably show that really clearly in five photos. If this is a brand new custom home that you've built, you're probably looking at more along the lines of 25. I would say at a minimum, five photos. You definitely want to make sure people get a really solid sense of what went into this project. So a minimum of five, but just go up from there. And when you look at it, you feel like the story really shows all of the work that went into this. Again, remember, uh, that homeowner wants to know that you've worked on something the same scale that they're going to do. So you really want to show off that you can handle some of those bigger projects. OK, that's a great answer. We have kind of one that's similar. Is there a suggested amount of projects you should have on your profile? Again, you really just want to show off as many projects as you can, to be honest. This is really, you know, people love looking at these photos and get them really excited about it. So the more photos you have, the more time they're going to spend on your profile. I will say that, though, use a little caution. Um, you want to make sure that your projects show your company and your work and you as a professional in the best light. So maybe on a couple of these projects, you had just snapped a couple photos on your cell phone. They're kind of dark. You can sort of see things. In that case, more is definitely not better. You want to make sure that you have nice photos that really showcase your best work. But as long as you have that, I would say keep uploading. Um, again, you know, if you can get to at least five or six projects, that is really good. No, a great answer. Um, Kathy here wants to know, are you limited to a number of keywords? Kathy, you are limited. So that is why we give you the drop downs. So there are a few ways that you can really enter information. And I will say when your keywords are limited, uh, you still get a lot. I think you have 400 characters to add keywords. So you're going to be able to add a lot of information. But that's why it's really important to use those drop downs. Once you've used those drop downs, you don't then need to re-enter that information as a keyword. They work the same way. So that's a great way to don't waste your space for your keywording. Use those drop downs, add the general information, the keywords, then get really specific for everything else that it didn't cover. And then there is also a box that it says description. Now that is visible. So anyone that looks at your photo, if you choose to put a description, just know that everyone will be able to see it. But that's also a way to maybe sneak in a few more keywords. Um, if you're going to give people some idea of what they're looking at and add some of those describing words in there. So between those three things, it's, it's usually more than enough space to add those keywords in there. Very thorough. Um, I was gonna a few more before we continue. <laughs> and we have more. <laughs> we have a few more right now before we continue. Kevin wants to know if, he says, if our project was a window or door installation, would photos be uploaded as spaces or products? So if you are just uploading a photo, so a product photo would be something like the stock image of that window. So if you're looking at a catalog and it's just that window sitting there with nothing else, that you would upload as a product. Otherwise, if you're showing that window in the space, and so it shows either the rest from the exterior or if it's from inside and it's showing that window, that is a space photo. So it's still fine to talk about the window and that that was your place in that project. But what I'm looking at is actually a space. That makes sense. Um, Kathy uh, has another question. She asks, how many reminders for review requests get sent out? Just one. So once you send that initial request, we then send one more reminder, like I said, on your behalf. Um, so it's going to come from your email. Hey, don't forget to go in and review me. And then we stop. 
So you don't have to worry that they're going to be getting, you know, 19 emails from you. Please go in and review me a few weeks later. Um, it's just that one reminder. When you go in and you click on that Get Review that's going to take you to the review area, actually underneath that form, we will keep track for you of every person that you've requested a review from with the date you asked for it and the message that you sent them. So it's a nice little bookkeeping piece for you. Um, you then can see, you know what, I just asked this person a few months ago, I'm going to wait and ask a new group. Does, does there, is there a follow-up email that gets sent out? Or a thank yeah, you, so sorry. Not, thank you. Yeah. So, so there isn't a thank you. That would be something that you guys can elect to do once a review has been posted on your account. So when a review shows up on your profile, and you guys, of course, will be able to see that, that review is on there and see the content. The content of it is actually a live link for you. So if you click on it, so the message of the review, just click on it, it gives you an option to respond to it. And so that way you can actually go and thank that person for taking the time to review you. Now again, if you choose to do it that way, it is public. So now when people are looking at your profile, they'll be able to see that someone took the time to review you and also that you took the time to thank them. So it's actually a really good thing to do, but that's not something that we decide for you. That would be something that you would have to go in and follow up. Okay, we have a few more just quickly. Sarah would like to know, what is the best way to connect and manage multiple users who work for her company with one house page? Yes, so this one can be a little tricky, um, and Sarah, just let me know if I'm not answering this quite clearly for your situation. Um, it's really up to you. There isn't a way to give people separate admin access. For multiple people to be on the account, everyone would need to use the same email and password to log into the account. Multiple email addresses can be added to get notifications if something happens, but you guys all log in the same way. So this is where it's going to be, once someone logs in, they have access to everything. So it's really at your discretion how many people you want to have access to go in and upload photos. They will, again, be able to send reviews, do all of that under one account, or if you want it to be funneled through one person. Because um, like I said, they're all going to have access to everything. There's not a way to limit that. If you don't, if you have multiple employees and you don't want them necessarily to have access to a company account, I would suggest it's better to have one, maybe two people that have access that can go in and send out the review request, do those things, upload photos, and then have each employee go in and just create a personal account. That way they'll be able to share idea books and communicate with clients on projects but they won't be making editorial decisions on your company profile. All right, that's all the questions for now. Thanks for answering that. We have a few yeah. more. Oh. We'll, we'll, oh. Save them. Oh. We'll, we'll save them till the end. We'll let you jump back yeah. in for a bit. Oh, sure, okay. So now I just wanted to show you guys, once we've talked about how you make sure you have a really strong presence on house that it's successful for you, I wanted to show you guys some new tools that we have. So one of the brand new things that we have is a tool called Sketch. So if you have not yet downloaded the House app, you definitely need to because this is a lot of fun. To simplify, it literally allows you to sketch on photos. So now when you're having a conversation with clients or they're sharing photos with you, and you aren't quite sure if they like the photo, if they don't, what exactly they're talking about, both of you guys now have the ability to go in and actually sketch on the photo. So in this case, do you actually, do you like this pendant like and point at it? They can go in and put that star on it, yes I do. Or circling the stools with the smiley face, this is what I was talking about. We have a bunch of different templates in there. You can actually go in and use different floor plans, um, different tools. One of the things that is really fun is you can actually take a photo 
So you can start working in the actual room. So you can pull in products from house. You can go in and draw certain things and actually see what it would look like in that space. So when you go into your house app, if you don't have it, download it. If you have it, there is a new update available. And then you will see that sketch tool is in there and available for you guys to play with. So idea books. Like I said earlier, everyone on house has idea books. It's where you are going and saving photos that you like for inspiration that you just want to keep track of. But idea books are also a really powerful way for you guys to work with your clients. Once they found you because of your beautiful house profile and you're working on a project, going in and using idea books. So we have added a collaborate button. So what you can do, and my advice, is when you have a new client, go in, create a new idea book, and it, at the top, you'll see circled in green, it says add or edit collaborators. When you click on that, you'll actually be able to go in, add the email address of this client that you're working with, and so now when they log into their house account, that same idea book will be waiting for them. You have the option to make it private. So now you can have this entire conversation with your client um, include spouses, anyone that's working on the project, if you want to include other professionals. And now you guys can have this conversation looking at these photos all right here and have that privately. So there's not all the going back and forth and emailing and maybe you're not exactly sure what they're looking for or if they like it or they don't. This can all happen right here in idea books. If a client already has idea books, which I'm sure many of them do, just tell them to go in and add you as a collaborator, and that way you can now have this interactive meeting. So those are the tools and tips that I have for you guys. Again, I'm Lindsay Fadine. If you have any questions after this, you can always go to support.house.com. That is a resource center that we have created. It is all of the most common questions that we get on house. And it's the question or issue and the answer. And this isn't a discussion. It's our expert that has gone in and answered that for you. So that's a really good place to start. We also have our Pro Center. So it's house.com backslash Pro Center. We have a bunch of videos and tutorials step by step that will walk you through what I talked about today uploading photos, adding keywords on there, how you navigate through your profile, and a bunch of new features to help you guys enhance your website. Those are all in our pro center. And with that, I'm happy to take a few more questions, if you have them. All right, right before we get into the questions, I just wanted to mention that here at Surefire Social, we do have an offer for the recording of this presentation. Many of you have asked about that in the chat box. And we also offer a complimentary, complimentary website consultation. And as we ask these final questions, I'm going to open a poll, poll question for you to answer. And um, if you would like, this should be starting right now. There we go. And then you'll see it on your screen. If you can answer, that'd be great. And then Sarah has a question. What is the? So Kevin has one oh, more question. Sorry, Kevin. Kevin wants to know, every photo looks like they were taken by a professional rather than someone using an iPhone. Is there something House does that ensures pictures are such high quality? We help as much as we can. So we tell you guys to upload the largest file size that you have. Even if you've taken it with an iPhone, phones these days take beautiful photos. When you're saving it to your computer, save it as the largest file size you can. Don't save it. Some people will save it as optimal for uploading to a website. Don't do that. Save it as the biggest file size you can. 
then we also optimize it to make sure it fits within that same size and shape and really enhance some of that. So we try to help you make your pictures look as beautiful as possible. Now we do see a lot of professionals that are working with photographers. One resource that we have for you, if you need it, if you go to house.com backslash get photos, we have a photographer's network. It is just, we saw a lot of photographers that were creating profiles on house, and we thought, okay, what if there's a better way for you guys to find each other? So when you go to that, you pick your area, and you will see photographers that are available in your area, and we ask them to give a first-time um, introductory price. So they put themselves in the category of 250 750 and 1500 I believe, based on their experience and what they can, you know, where they feel career-wise they can offer that to you. But so that would also get you eight daytime photos at that price point. So we try to help your photos by optimizing when you upload them, look as beautiful as possible. And then that's another resource if you feel you need the help of a photographer. Any other questions for me? Yeah, we have one last question. Um, Kathy wants to know what you meant by placing a stool on another image. If you could explain that a bit more, it was in the sketch tools you were talking about. Yes. So when you're in and playing with sketch, one thing you can do if, for example, the photo I showed you, it already had stools in it. So you can just circle them and put a smiley face or you know, were these the stools that you were talking about? If it's something that's already in the photo, you can really just circle it and add a bunch of stickers. But you can also take products that are in our marketplace on house and kind of pull them in, quote unquote. So you have a little button in there that you can look at different products and actually pull them in to see what they would look like in this space. So you could pull in a lamp, you could pull in, um, so stool, for example, and see what it looks like and say, is this what you were talking about? So there were a couple ways that I maybe referenced those stools. You can either talk about something that's already in the photo, or you can pull in other products to kind of play with it and see what different products would look like. Great answer. Um, so if you have any last, last second questions, you can enter them in now. We're going to be closing the poll in a few few seconds. And Kathy says, awesome. Thank you, Lindsay. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, oh, yes. Kathy would also like to know, if you have a problem, is there live support available? Um, yeah. So, sort of. We don't outsource anything. It's all, if you need to talk to someone, it's going to be a member of our team. So one of the best places to start is that house.support. Go in there, and you can actually submit a ticket. It's going to route it to the appropriate person on our team to make sure you get an answer. But we also do actually have account representatives. They do free profile consultations. That is something that you can request if you go to house and say, I want some help with my profile. Member of our team on the phone and do a 30-minute profile consultation and walk you through any issues that you have. So that's another option for you guys. All right, excellent. And Chris has, uh, ju would just like you to remind us again what the website was for photographers. It's house.com backslash get photos. All right. I think that wraps it up. Thank you very much, Lindsay. And this is Shashi Balamkonda, Chief Marketing Officer of Surefire Social. Thank you, everyone, for coming to this webinar. From the questions that you answered, it seems like uh, we had people from across the country in different uh, industry types. So, Lindsay, uh, how can they get in touch with you? Well, you can always email me. My email is lindsay, L-I-N-D-S-E-Y, at house.com. Otherwise, if you go to our 
support.house page, that's where you can go in and submit a ticket if you have a more general question or need some extra help on something. Thank you, Lindsay. Once again, everyone, every month we have industry uh, educational webinars about the industry, so feel free to send any topic suggestions. And you definitely must vote for having us having Lindsay back again in a couple of months for giving <laughs> us more tips on house. Really, really appreciate your time today, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.